You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be doing a SmackDown Live recap from September 26th. Yes, despite what I may have written down. Yes, because you thought yesterday was the 27th. I did. Um, so, what did you think of SmackDown? It wasn't bad. There was no um, particularly, like... Bad segments? Yeah. There was I, no terrible gender promos? Oh, wait, there was. Yeah, but it wasn't... As bad as it was last week? It definitely was not. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the Bulgaria, Pride of yeah. Bulgaria segment or whatever with Rusev. Fair but All right, well, we'll yeah. get into it, and when we get to that point, yeah. we'll discuss further. It's true. So uh, we opened the show with Kevin Owens, and uh, Shane McMahon wasn't there at this point, so mm-hmm. he was kind of going on about, you know, where's Shane? Where is he? He said he was going to come out and do this stuff, and he's not here. And he says that, uh, you know, he respects Vince after everything that happened. And he says, uh, just imagine, and you saw what I did to him, just imagine what I'll do to Sheen. Mm-hmm. So um, Sami Zayn comes out and he goes to talk sense into Owens. And he's like, you know, I've seen you snap before, but, uh, you know, this is getting a little out of hand. Uh, you're about to cross that line you've never crossed before, you know, because headbutting the... Uh, chairman and ceo of the company or yeah it's, that's usually not a great idea for your <laughs> career um you know basically owen says well you're only saying that because uh i'm outshining you you've been to smackdown you're not doing anything which is that's what fair. he said somewhat recently right well yeah uh, it was like two when weeks ago it was when he was looking for um a guest referee i think mm. it, he said it'll actually give you something to do yeah and then he's like uh sammy kind of went on about what he would do, you know, what he plans on doing and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. uh, he says that Owens only got to where he was because of cutting corners and taking the easy way out. And getting handed titles. Yes, and then, of course, Owens ran down his accomplishments and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then Sammy called him a piece of trash, and they both dropped the microphone and were about to fight. And Daniel Bryan comes out and says that I think Shane will be here later on tonight. We'll have a match between you two. Yeah, I don't understand why it would matter if Shane was there or not. But nah. You know. Whatever. Yeah, so anytime they put Owens and Sammy in a match together, it's gonna you're going to get a good match. Yeah, so I don't care. It's true. I mean, it's, you know, Seth and Dean versus our own Sheamus or the New Day versus the Usos. You know, these, kinda, these guys kind of fall in that same pattern where regardless of how many times we see it, it's going to be a good match. Yeah, you're going to get quality. Um, and I think the biggest problem people might have is the fact that they, they named a pay-per-view match the last time ever that Mm -hmm. they're gonna, I think that's the only problem with it. That was a battleground, what, two years ago? (laughs) Yeah, it was, it was right after the draft, I think. Oh, so it was only a year ago. Or maybe it was the, maybe it was a year before the draft. It couldn't have been now I think about it, because I don't think Sammy was up that long before the draft. Probably not. Because he was hurt. Yeah. So um so I, I would imagine that it was probably a year yeah, ago. Cause we, yeah, yeah cuz we yeah. cuz we weren't back into the main roster at that point. We yeah. started with NXT before we got back into everything. Yeah, so it was probably then. Yeah. All right, so up next we have Baron Corbin versus Ty Dillinger. Yeah. Uh, with so. AJ on commentary. Ty on TV, what? Four weeks in a row, something like that. Well, he's being used to, as like a catalyst for this uh, U.S. title feud. Yeah. So that's certainly something for him. Mm-hmm. It's not ideal. Yeah, oh, because it works well, for him. He's not the main focus of the feud, though. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest problem. Right. But at the same time, he is still relatively new on the main roster. People may not recognize mm-hmm. him. Well, and he, you had him come out. Everybody knew who he was, and then all of a sudden, you threw him away for what? couple months or something yeah. like that it felt like people could forget <clears throat> yeah um so they get into the ring and we get introduced and aj comes out for commentary and they're about to start the match and we go to commercial before the match even starts mm-hmm. but they want to get make sure they get as much time of that picture in picture as they can yeah, yeah. got to get their bang for their buck i'm sure yeah. there's some kind of incentive for them to do that I don't know. It feels like the commercials are longer, even though they're not. But it's just, I don't, I don't know. know. 
Well, this way they can cut down the matches. They don't have to have all the rest holds that they do on Raw and stuff like that. That's true. This way they... So you get more time, you know. More actual more wrestling. quality per... Yeah, for the two so, hours. It's true. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this was a decent enough match. Um, it was back and forth for the most part, I believe, right? Um, yeah, there was really no no real domination yeah. of any kind. Um, so, yeah, at one point, I think... Uh, AJ was yelling at Corbin, right? And Corbin went outside the ring, and AJ you know, told him to focus on Ty. Mm-hmm. And uh, AJ smacks the water that apparently AJ was holding that I didn't even notice. Well, you know. And it goes everywhere. What, what, what had actually happened was it was at the commentator table before the show started. Mm-hmm. And then they go, here you go, AJ. You're going to oh, yeah. hold on to this. <laughs> right, until the time. Yep. It wasn't one of those uh, Mountain Dews that you're not allowed to touch at the table no. during the pay-per-views. It was a water, because if it was Mountain Dew, it would be all over the place. Also, you <laughs> can't... sticky. Yeah, you can't disgrace the name of Mountain Dew, because then they'll get sad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so Corbin knocks the water out of AJ's hand, and Ty comes out to go after Corbin, but then Corbin turns around and throws Ty into AJ. And then over the table. Yeah, over the table. And then Ty gets count, doesn't make it back to the ring for the 10 count, yeah. and Corbin wins. It's true. So it'd be a lot easier to tell when the 10 count was if the stupid <laughs> fans didn't keep on shouting 10 <laughs> every like, time. What number are you on? Oh, yep. we got the 10. Perfect 10 get counted out by the 10 count. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, so after the match, Corbin grabs the microphone. He basically says that AJ can't beat him one-on-one and he challenges him to a match at hell in a cell Mm -hmm. and then later on we uh got word that that match is official it's true so you think they'll add ty into this it's possible there's what oh one more smackdown yeah no there's two no one there's oh yeah it's on the eighth okay yeah it's right in the beginning (laughs) yeah so yeah it's possible yeah it I mean, could, it only makes sense. You know, you've had him for this long. Yeah, what they could do is have him... Um, hmm, maybe he just comes out and demands to be part of it. Yeah. Cause maybe it, next week they'll do, like, a contract signing or something like that. Yeah, because there's no reason for there to be any kind of match next week. No. So Not at all. So this... I, I would think that if that's going to happen, that's what's going to be yeah. the case. Which is fine. Because otherwise you're just going to leave Ty off another pay-per-view. It's true. And he's the perfect person to take the pinfall. Like I had said, you know, Corbin goes over him. But it, then again, it doesn't I don't think that's going to happen. AJ I don't see AJ. Yeah, I don't see AJ losing the title. Um, or it prolongs this feud with yeah. AJ getting the win over Ty or something like that. And yeah, exactly. Like, you never beat me. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I... What was I going to say? The... Um, do not remember. Okay. I lost my train of thought. Sure. But yeah, the triple throw would be good. Yep. Oh, okay. I remember what I was going to say now. There's no reason to have him be in this feud the whole time. And then right before Just the paper, you have him face in English on the oh, pre-show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That That's just silly. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um. Up next, we have one, uh, uh, one of life's uh, guaranteed truths. <laughs> like paying taxes and death, we have a Jinder, Jinder Mahal promo on an episode of SmackDown. Pretty much. And it's not even like a good one. It's one of those uh, where he talks at the audience one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, him and the Singh brothers come out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he says that maybe I went a little too far last week. <laughs> And then he went and did pretty much the same thing with the faces. Pretty much. But he said he was going to compliment Shinsuke this week. Yes, he's going to be nice this time. <clears throat> so this was a little... Yeah. It's getting a little old. Yeah. But he he does one of his faces, and all of a sudden, one of the faces start moving. Yeah. And it turns out that Shinsuke's backstage. <laughs> and he, go, he goes, "Who who's messing with my picture? <laughs> Who put that picture up? And then Shinsuke starts talking, and the crowd starts going, what? But uh, they were really chanting for Shinsuke during this promo, so. Yeah. At least they're, I don't know. It it feels like WWE is like, all right, there's two foreigners wrestling. we got to tell you guys which one to cheer for. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. (sighs) Um, So 
after he talks a little bit on the on the screen, mm-hmm. then he finally the lights go out and the music starts. Uh, Shinsuke comes out and then he ends up uh, attacking Jinder. Well, yeah, Shinsuke comes out and he sends the Singh brothers out to go after him, mm-hmm. and then they get beat down, and then Jinder, I mean, uh, Shinsuke goes into the ring, and then they start getting the upper hand, and then Shinsuke is able to actually stand tall. And he hit Jinder with a Kinshasa. Yes. So yeah, this. Well, he's, uh, got, he's got to get the last word in avenge, uh, sometimes. Yeah. So uh, you, you think Jinder's going to drop the title? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. Well, I don't like the idea, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. There's no reason for it to be ha- here. Right. No, I get it. Yeah. But, I mean, well, where do you go from here? Um. I would. I don't really see Shinsuke picking up the title in this feud. No, I know, but I mean, with Jinder, who's his next opponent? Um, this would be the only reason why AJ loses the U.S. title. Yeah. Fair enough, but I. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But Unless you have Mojo Raleigh. <laughs> no, nah, he's gonna be too busy with uh, his boy, Zack Ryder, Luke uh, Harper. Shut up, Dolph Ziggler. There you go. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's no way to tell. No, it's just Sami Zayn, or it's just gonna be Shinsuke again yeah, for a while. Better not be. It's like the Baron Corbin, not Baron Corbin, uh, Finn Balor and Bray Wyatt thing. Uh, just yeah, keeps on dragging on so. forever. I guess so. Right, granted, this... No, they've been going on similar lengths of time because they were built up right before SummerSlam, yeah. both of oh, them. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, so then uh, we had the New Day come out. Yes. And we got their entrance, mm-hmm. and then we cut to commercial. Of course. Then we came back, and both the Usos and the Hype Bros got the job or entrances. Yeah, I was going to say, they had announced that the the Usos were going to be in action. Right. But the, the New Day came out first. And then we pan to the first row of the audience, and they're all the new day is all there eating popcorn. Yeah, that's pretty funny. And they're like pajamas. They had like hoodies and I yeah, don't know, was, you know, they have strange yeah, attire. They're themselves. Uh, so yeah, this was not a very long match. No, well, it's tag match. Crazy on. though, we've seen the Hypros three weeks in a row. That is true. Yeah, yeah. that is definitely um, not as a little surprising. I guess they're gonna show us until they uh, finish Sp- it off. Well, so, I guess it's more impactful <clears throat> if they have a, a heel turn. If they right. Ha- well, yeah, I guess you have to see the breakdown of the team mm-hmm. building up to the feud. So it makes sense. So because I think with uh, Golden Truth splitting up, mm-hmm. it was yeah, we got them a couple weeks in a yeah. row too. But their win loss record wasn't very good. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> um. So yeah. So <clears throat> they had. I think Zach was on the top rope. I don't remember which Uso was laying on the ground. Ed, yeah, they're the yeah. same person. Um, and so Mojo kind of smacks Zach's back and tags himself in, and Zach is like, what the hell? So Mojo, uh, Mojo gets in the ring, and then he gets pushed into Zach, and then one of the Usos hits a frog splash, and that was the end of it. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then after the match, Big E pulls a microphone out of his popcorn uh <laughs> Bag? Bag. Yeah, I guess it was a bag. It was it was the container. Yeah. Whatever the whatever. whatever you want to call Doesn't it. matter. Yeah. Tub and, of uh, popcorn. Yeah. So they go back and forth and then they say, uh that they I guess they wanted to defend the titles at inside Hell in a Cell. That yeah. was, That's what the, the yeah. New Day wanted to yeah. do. Because they, they well, were they tired were talking of, about the Uso penitentiary yeah. and then they were like, Yeah, but we defend the titles inside Hell in a Cell. We don't want to just defend the titles at Hell in a Cell. We want to do it in Hell in a Cell. Yes. And then they went nuts. Oh, yeah. It was so funny. Big E was, like, shoving fistful of popcorn in his mouth. <laughs> Kofi and Xavier Woods were shaking all over the place. It was it was interesting. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty funny. But, I mean, it's going to be interesting. should be a good match. Oh, absolutely. I don't I don't see a reason why they, they shouldn't have a good match. No, I'm sure they'll come up with all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. So I look forward to it. Mm-hmm. We got your favorite segment next. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> so, what is it? The Pride of Bulgaria celebration? That's it. Where Rusev is going to get the key 
I don't know what the city was called. Um, it, uh, or something it's like his that. hometown, I guess. I, yeah, I guess that's. And what he's it was. getting the key because of his victory over Randy Orton last, last week. week in nine <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yes. Despite the fact that at SummerSlam he lost in ten seconds. Mm-hmm. Um. Why? Yeah. Why? 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 Because they have nothing to do. I know. It's so dumb. What they had Aiden English there to introduce. Rusev, and mm-hmm. he's like sung their national anthem or whatever. No, was the, no, it wasn't. It was an. It was a song in honor of Rusev. No, he did that afterward. Oh, oh. no, that was the Rusev Day song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sang like the uh, the national anthem or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but at least they're working Aiden English into this too. That's true. I mean, he's not doing anything. They seem to have some sort of faith in him. Yeah, they keep on putting him with Randy Orton. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, not to get off topic, but you heard that Maria Canellis is pregnant. I did not. Yes. How come they didn't make a big stink about it? I don't know, but they, I believe, they're like she's like ten weeks pregnant, uh-huh. and they came to the W. They made their deb- debut like twelve weeks ago. So I wonder if they're like, ooh, cushy job, health insurance. Let's get pregnant. I believe it. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Especially in this world. Mm-hmm. Take what you can get. It's true. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it was apparently Rusev Day. They had, uh, I don't know, if, I guess it was the mayor out there sure. saying that it, it, he was declaring September 26th Rusev Day. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Aiden English sung a song about Rusev. And so, yeah. so then Orton so, came out of the crowd and hit him with an RKO. Yeah, while he was singing, yep. he hit um, Aiden English with the RKO. And then hit Rusev with one. Well, yeah, Rusev went to attack him, but mm-hmm. Randy was very quick to... yeah. It was kind of funny after after uh, Randy came in and hit Andy English, <clears throat> Rusev's going to the the mayor or whatever, and he's like, "You gotta go, you gotta go." <laughs> <clears throat> you so. didn't think it would have been a good idea for Randy Orton to, uh, to attack the mayor? It'd be funny, <laughs> but you know, yeah. All right, mm-hmm. so uh, up next we got a uh, Daniel Bryan and Sami Zayn backstage segment. Yep. Uh, for some reason, again, Daniel Bryan says that Shane is on his way. Yeah, he was. He got a phone call like in the beginning. Of the oh yeah, segment. he was. He was on the yeah. phone. Yeah. Um, and then Sammy goes, "Call Shane back. I don't need him here." Yeah. And I don't want him to interfere in my match because Kevin Owens is mine. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. So he is not afraid. Yep. And then we get Randy Orton walking through the backstage area, and he sees Renee Young, <laughs> and he's like, "Tell Rusev that when he wakes up." Or if he wants a real match, he can come face me at Hell in a Cell. Mm-hmm. And then he says, and by the way, happy Rusev Day. <laughs> it's really <laughs> funny, actually. Yeah, man. It was surprising humor from the Viper. Yeah. Eh, he's had his moments. I know, it just doesn't seem very in character. But it's okay. Can't come. He's been phoning in for a while, so it doesn't matter. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's not like he's doing anything of oh, no. importance. No. Even his feud with Jinder was nothing. Even his feud with Bray. Bray and that was over the title. Oh, boy. Granted, so is Jinder. So, yeah, but still. Um, all right, so uh, up next we have a uh, match with uh, Charlotte versus Carmella. Yeah. So interesting ent- entrance for Carmella. <laughs> she uh, she had James Ellsworth on a leash mm-hmm. coming down to the ring. So, and then she tied him to the ring post. That was my favorite. It was like on the bottom turnbuckle. Yeah, so he couldn't move. There was one point in the match where Charlotte, he was trying to run after Charlotte and got stuck because he <laughs> realized, you know, like when a dog runs yeah. and their collar runs out of, uh, or their uh, rope runs out of room. Ah, uh, good stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Charlotte, I think, controlled most of the match. And then Carmella had gotten the upper hand at one point when, uh, Ellsworth, I think, grabbed her leg when Charlotte went up top, mm-hmm. and then oh yeah, because yeah. he jumped, he jumped up. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, Carmella is really starting to put on some pretty decent matches. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this one wasn't, wasn't bad. I mean, she's not her, there to be in the ring with Charlotte yet, you know. Yeah, but her, part. but her matches in general, she's at least not like she's she feels she feels more comfortable. Oh, seems absolutely. More comfortable. Well, I. I like we said, the whole money in the bank briefcase is meant to elevate your mm-hmm. who true. you are. And it helps everybody except for Baron Corbin. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, during the match, uh, Charlotte did her um, 
her the move where she like puts their head between oh, yeah, yeah. her legs and, and she just over. Yeah. flips them around she the whole ring three or four times. Yeah, I think that, that was, was during awesome. the commercial break, right? Um, I think yeah, was it? it was. Yeah, no. it's really cool though. Mm-hmm. It's it's very very interesting how yeah. she can just well, it's probably not that hard to to make them. Move no, it looks there. cool though. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Charlotte ended up getting the win with a big boot. Yeah. Why? And, I don't know why they're doing that, yeah, but. Whatever. And then after the match, Natalia comes out and says that she's glad Rick is okay because then he can see his daughter lose at Hell in a Cell. What a jerk. Yeah. What so. a jerk. I mean, that should be a good match. Yeah. Well, it's happened before, though. Yeah. So it's not like it's uh, no. like recently before, but. You think Charlotte will probably win the belt? I guess so. I don't know. I just. Natalia just never feels like a champion. Well. I think this was just a transition to get it off of a face and put it back mm-hmm. on a face. Yeah. So, and it would make sense for Charlotte just to have the title because she's Charlotte. Right. And you figure they're going to do some sort of uh, Raw vs. SmackDown match at Survivor Series. Which... Yeah, so the title won't even be contested. No. Yeah, so. exactly, because they're at that weird point again where their pay-per-view is the beginning of the month, and the next month is a dual brand pay-per-view, and then... December. That's so much time. Yeah. It's going to so, be a rough period. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So uh, you want to hit, you want to do this sure. one? Sure. So all of a sudden, we, I think we came back from commercial, right? Probably. And uh, The Undertaker's music is playing. And Well, first, first you hit the gong. The gongs, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Corey Graves is like, what, what is that? <laughs> yep. And then we hear The Undertaker's music and. We kind of knew where this was going. Oh, I knew exactly yeah, what was I going knew on as, as soon, soon as, as it happened. Yeah. But there were people who did not realize it. Oh, I'm sure there wasn't. There was a lot there of... Uh, so, yeah, anyway, it, become, it was Dolph. Yeah. Because it was funny. You see him come out, and he's got the hat on and the jacket and the gloves and everything. It's like, wow, he looks... He is not a tall presence like The Undertaker. I was going to say, you could <laughs> probably tell just by the height. Yeah. Um, and, you know. I think one of the commentators was talking it up. Like, I can't believe The Undertaker's back here or something like that. I think it was Tom, actually. No, it was probably Byron. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. So, yeah, so Dolph grabs the or has the microphone, and he says, well, you look like you've seen a ghost, or should I say a dead man? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like I said, you suck chance erupts from the crowd. And then Dolph expected. goes on and on and on about what he normally goes on about. Yeah, about people are just entrances, I'm the best in the ring, blah, blah, yep. blah. And then we finally had it happen. <laughs> After weeks, Bobby Roode finally comes out. Yep. Well, because he's been flat out off TV for a while, right? Yeah, he was uh, opening the show. Uh, before the show, I should say. He was uh, the dark match. Oh. Uh... Yeah. So I'll, sh- I'll show you the picture afterward. There is a picture of, I think it was right at maybe quarter after eight when Sammy and Kevin, we're in the ring, and you can just see the entire arena is empty behind the hard camera. It was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Ay, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, uh, you know, Bobby Roode comes out, and he says that uh, Dolph is an amazing in-ring talent, but he's a hypocrite because he's getting himself over by doing everybody's entrance. It's true. Um, So Roode challenges him to a match at Hell in a Cell. And then Dolph talks bad about the glorious gimmick. What does he say? You know, oh, flashy entrance. Yeah. And he goes on and he says, in ring talent, don't think so. Or we're up to par with Dolph Ziggler, something like that. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. And then he uh, he accepts the challenge. So we'll get Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler at Hell in a Cell. Yeah. It's so weird how they seamlessly transitioned him from a heel to a face. Oh, Bobby? Yeah. He went from being the. the biggest bad guy at nxt to just being yeah but i mean he was he was always just i mean he would always get cheered by the crowd it's true so it, it's just it only him. made sense right he was just the guy looking to do bad you know yeah he would always go looking to do the wrong thing mm-hmm. so uh yeah that brought us to our main event of sammy zane versus kevin owens yes and uh this is a good match as usual mm-hmm. um so about halfway through the match we get a look in the back and Shane opens up the door. Then so, we go to, then we go to commercial as uh, soon as that happens. Then we come back and then you see Shane come out and uh oh wait, wait no, no no that was uh that was pr- before. We didn't actually have Shane come out yet. Mm-hmm. So uh 
Sami Zayn was going to do his spot where he jumps through the turnbuckle outside the ring uh-huh. to the DDT. I don't know yeah. if there's an actual name for it. I don't know, but it's cool. It is cool. I was like, oh my god, we haven't seen this since like NXT. Yeah, I feel like he, he's hit it a couple times on the main roster. Yeah. Oh, he but... did it against Braun. Yes. Yeah, but not not many times. Mm-hmm. So he went to do that, and Owens ended up hitting him with a super kick, and then Owens picks him up and power bombs him on the apron, which he was famous for in NXT, and he's yeah. done it a couple times. Yeah, he did it to Chris roster. Jericho. I think he probably did it to Seth at least once. Yeah. So, um, so the ref stopped the match and kind of threw it out because mm-hmm. Sammy was unable to compete. Yeah. So the referees and medical staff and whatnot came out, and they're escorting Sammy away from the ring. And Owen bl- Owens blindsides him, knocks him down, goes to grab a chair, and he puts it around Sammy's neck. At this point, this is when Shane came out. Mm-hmm. So he comes running out, and Owens pushes Zane into into Shane. And he made contact with him where the chair was. Uh-huh. Like he hit Shane in the face or in the neck or something like that. It did not look like a pretty spot, because Shane mm-hmm. kept checking himself every time. Well, yeah. Um, and then Shane ran in, you know after owens and owens ran into the crowd and just stood there and stared down at each other you can't touch me i'm in the i'm in the universe but it it was a a decent main event Mm. but i don't know yeah now now that i look through it it just just seems like smackdown is lacking something yeah it just doesn't have the star power and the yeah it doesn't have the big feel I think that's really it. It's not even necessarily the talent's not there. It's just yeah. not. It doesn't feel. Yeah, because they always put on good matches. Mm-hmm. And mean, the storylines aren't bad. It's just no. it doesn't have the gravitas that Raw, Raw has. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's the drawing power. Mm-hmm. Um, Jinder's champion doesn't help. It does not. I mean, granted, Lesnar on Raw, but we've gone over this before. When he does show up, it seems a little more important. Right, but even with uh, Brock off the show, you always have somebody to take over that. Spotlight. Oh yeah, you have you got Roman. Anything he does is technically a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, Dean and Seth have been ripping it up with the tag team oh, yeah. stuff. Um, you can easily put Strowman in any situation. Mm-hmm. We've seen the Miz. The Miz has stepped up a mm-hmm. lot. And we had John Cena for a while. John Cena for a little bit, yeah. Um. Hardys. The Hardys, yeah, anytime they do anything. Finn Balor, I mean. There's just a laundry oh. list of people, whereas yeah. on SmackDown, everybody, it's just like formulaic. It doesn't matter. You're just, yeah, wherever, you could yeah. be in the, the the curtain jerker or you could be closing the show. And yeah. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. Yeah. No matter what. Well, I mean, I, I think maybe AJ with the U.S. title, I feel like he, he should be main eventing the show in this weak point. Well, it's true, but I don't know. Well, hopefully, like you said, maybe we'll get Jinder and AJ, and AJ can finally capture that title, which will bring us into WrestleMania with him and Nakamura facing each other. That's definitely possible. But I think they're putting too much emphasis on this Kevin Owens and Shane feud. Yeah, well, I think that's that's just for Hell in a Cell. Um, I'm just saying that's the reason why AJ's not a bigger No, 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 I, I know, but he hasn't been for... I mean, actually, no, the U.S. title was outshining the title, yeah, when him and Kevin Owens. It's, it's really Kevin Owens who they're really trying to put in the Yeah, I guess that's spotlight. true. Maybe that's what the the thing is yeah. about. And that's not a knock against Kevin Owens because he's Oh, no, there's nothing player. wrong yeah. with it. It's just usually that you would think that because he's feuding with Shane that that's the reason why, because yeah. of Shane, not necessarily because of Owens. Mm-hmm. So. But also, yeah, it also feels like there's a lot of stuff thrown together, too. Well, you know, it yeah. is WWE. That's true, so. And, uh, oh, we did get mentioned that the Fashion Files will be back next week. Yes. So that is a good thing. It's true. Um, because if they're not doing that, they're not on TV pretty much. Or, or they're, they're on 205 Live. Yes. That only happened once, I think. Yeah, I believe so. That was pretty funny, though. It was good. Mm-hmm. They tied up um, Drew Gulak and dragged him around. <laughs> it's good yeah. stuff. But, yeah. I don't know. We will see, because uh, after Hell in a Cell, they got a lot of time. Yeah. Which worries me, and yeah. A lot of time between Hell in a Cell, mm-hmm. and then after that, a lot of time between their next pay-per-view yeah. after Survivor Series. And since all the matches have pretty much been set up, I feel like next week is going to be like Raw was before No Mercy. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Just yeah. recaps and stuff. Yeah. We have, what do we got? The title match. 
Mm. U.S. title match. Yep. Tag title match. Three, four. With women's the title match. Uh, uh, Bobby Ziggler Roode, and, Ziggler. Right. And then, do you think we'll get like the the heel turn of Zack Ryder and the pre-show will be Zack Ryder versus Mojo? Maybe. I don't know. I feel like that's going to be something maybe they'll save. I don't know. I don't see them putting that as a main feud, though. That's the problem. No, I mean building it up after. Oh, okay. Hell in a cell. We'll give it more time. Yeah, maybe. Even though, like you said, they've been on TV for three weeks in a row. This would be the time to do it. Yeah. But um, who knows? Yeah. Oh, and Rusev, Randy Orton, did we say yes. that? Yes. No, we did not. So, the six? Six matches. And that's what it, they had seven with. On no mercy, right? That sounds right. Yeah, but they also have the cruiserweight title, so it's true. That yeah, would even it up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this was our SmackDown review. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.